if I went in that job center over there and asked for a job where I want unlimited overtime, I want to go to work when I want, go home when I want, I want to be able to take as many lunch breaks as I like, I want unlimited holiday pay, I want to work for myself, I don't have to report to a boss, and whilst we're at it, can you chuck in a company car as well? Well, I think they'd probably laugh me out of the room, but the good thing is, such a job does exist. Let's go find out more. So we're here at St. Mary Axe, or the Gherkin. I think the one thing that draws a lot of people into the profession and people to become cab drivers is the fact that they are their own boss. They haven't got to work for someone else. They can conduct business however way they like. They can look at other avenues than just driving a taxi. I can work as a taxi driver, but then I can manage my time or any other business enterprises I do around taxi driving. There's taxi drivers out here who are professional or semi-professional footballers, athletes, boxers, that kind of thing. And if it doesn't work out for them, they've got the taxi to fall back upon. There's also people who work within the taxi trade directly. So I've got friends who uh, work specifically within airport transfers, so they'll just just focus on book, getting work and booking work back and forth uh, to airports rather than working in the town. Tour guide work, I'm also a tour guide, so that's another way of supplementing my income. There is no rule book to how you can do it. You might just want to work the streets and that's absolutely fine. Or you might have seen in previous episodes, uh, Paul Byron, he owns a fleet of taxis. Another way that you can swing it, he is an actual cab driver, goes out to work sometimes, but has a fleet of taxis that he rents out. You are your own boss. You can work as much as you want or as little as you want. You can go to work when you want, and come home when you want. Which leads us on to our next point. This one is still the most amazing thing I love about this job. You can go to work when you want, right? I haven't got to set an alarm, be up for a certain time to go to work. When I worked in retail, you'd have to be there for when the shop opens or before the shop opens. If you was on set, you have to be there for a certain time. With driving a taxi, I can turn up whenever I like. It's so weird, like, I haven't got to tell anyone when I've got to be at work. I just drive to work when I feel ready. I'm never on time, but I'm never late. I'm never late to work. Like, I can't think of anything else where you can do that. Like, even if you're a rock and roll star, you still have to go on stage at a certain time. You know, in retail, of course, the big ones are Saturdays and Sundays, the weekends. I can't tell you the amount of weekends I've lost where I've not felt great, I've just wanted to stay at home in bed or maybe just go see your friends that day. Well, the great thing with driving a cab is you can just do what you want. I generally don't work weekends because that's time with my girlfriend, maybe seeing my family or off riding my bike. And the best thing is if those plans fall through or it starts raining, I can just go to work. London hasn't exactly been missing me. I just turn up and just join in. It's just as easy as that. Now, some jobs you have to say when you want to go for your lunch break. I always find this so bizarre. Like when I used to work in retail on a busy Saturday, you have to schedule when you wanted to go for your lunch break. And it was annoying because you might not be able to go on lunch break with a friend, but also you might not be hungry at that time. They might want you to take the earlier lunch break when you might get a bit hungrier later on. So it was always weird. And also having a defined amount of time for lunch. I remember to have a half hour lunch break. It wasn't really enough time to you know, leave the shop, go across to say a retail park where you'd get some lunch or whatever, and then come back. So that's another great thing with being a cab driver. You can take as many lunch breaks as you want for how long you want. That's also where I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. They are, of course, Y Food. Now, I'm rocking the classic mainline pack at the moment, so that includes things like their uh, cold brew coffee flavor uh, or the classic chocolate flavor. And I bring these out with me because even though there's an abundance of lunch options in London, it's very easy to just take a walk down Temptation Alley and before you know it, you're eating burgers and other kind of crap. I'll probably only have one of these just as a lunchtime meal, but these are great for enable me to be consistent and healthy in the cab because of course they contain a perfect blend of carbohydrates, proteins and fats, as well as 26 vitamins and minerals. Now I'm gonna interrupt myself and if you haven't tried Y Food before, this month is the best time to try because with their Black Friday deal, you get the entire taster packs full 25% off, but you also get to use my 10% discount code on top of that. That's from the 14th of November all the way through to the 20th. So do act quickly. And to get my 10% off, just use my link or use the code taxi-youtube. 
Again, you can use those two discount codes together to get yourself massive savings off of Y Food exclusively this month. Give it a go. In we go. So this is a rest rank. I think it's actually technically a refreshment rank because it's by that, that green hut where I was at. You have green huts across London and there'll usually be a rank attached to it. It's called a refreshment rank because you park, you can go to that hut and get refreshments. If the hut isn't open, then of course, you know, you can go anywhere else. You have rest ranks across London as well. You have 60 minutes on a rest rank, meaning that you can go meet a friend for coffee, you could go stretch your legs in the park, whatever you want to do. You know, you've got an hour of free parking and it might just be something as simple as going to the toilet. It's one of the great privileges of having a black cab that you can just park it on one of these rest ranks, exclusive parking for you, free of charge. You haven't got to worry about is the traffic warden going to come slip and slap a ticket on it because you have exclusive right because you are in a taxi. So being a taxi driver, not only do you have a dedicated parking space, you get a company car as well. When I first started out driving, you most people generally rent taxis. So you get an idea of how the job works, how much you know you can make, what your cab costs, stuff like that. But then if you want to do it long term, it makes sense to take out a lease plan, you know, to buy your own cab. The great thing is, is that, okay, yes, I need to pay for that cab, understandably, but because it's a business expense, I can offset it against my tax bill. I can even write off the depreciation as well. Meaning that I've generally got to pay for it to do the job anyway, and at the end of it, I'm left with a personal vehicle. It's kind of cool, really, isn't it? It just means that in my personal life, I haven't then got to go worry about buying a vehicle, then insuring it, taxing it, because I already have to do that for the purposes of my business anyway. Obviously, there's going to be an amount for this taxi that is used exclusively for business and some for personal usage, so I can't claim all of it back against my taxes. It just means I haven't got to go through the hassle of having to buy my own car, insure my own car, all that. And plus, it's a pretty awesome, versatile vehicle anyway. I mean, I've used this to move house, I use it to take my bikes away when I go on competitions. It's a pretty awesome vehicle. I mean, it looks like a Bentley or a Rolls Royce, doesn't it? It's, it's an awesome vehicle to drive. So by being a London cab driver, there is unlimited overtime. And I mean, unlimited. It's not like being a lorry driver where you physically, by law, cannot work a certain amount of hours. In a cab, you can go for as long as you like. Now, obviously, common sense prevails here, and I still live by the argument that consistency is key, i.e. being able to turn up, be in a fresh state of mind, just doing your hours is going to be a much better long-term alternative. I'll admit, there's been times when I've come out here and gone, you know what, I'm going to stay a little bit later. Or maybe you get an expensive boiler repair, or as we know, the cost of living crisis, you can just come out and earn a little bit more money. Whereas if you're in some jobs, there might not be much overtime opportunity at all. And of course it may be limited. So you just come out here, just pick and choose when you want. And it gets quite addictive because it's money at the end of the day, straight in your back pocket. So this is on to our next point, which is every day is payday. I still can't get my head around the fact that I used to be paid monthly like you'd have to wait until the end of the month before you got the money that you worked for. But I speak with my friends and I'm like, should we book up this holiday or do this group activity we want to do? And there'd be an objection in the group because one of them would be like, ah, sorry, sorry mate, mate, I've, I've spent, spent out, out this month, month. got to got wait, wait until payday. payday. <laughs> I'm like, payday? Every day is payday in a taxi. So basically, I go out in the cab, obviously the majority of transactions in cab take place on card, but majority of payment providers can do same day or next day transfers to your bank it then appears in my bank account. I can't think of many jobs where you get paid instantly. Even if you work on a building site or something like that, there might be a date that it gets sent to you by, or you know, you have to invoice for something, whatever, and you have to wait for that invoice to be paid. There's no kind of lag for it in the cab. Yes, it does go to a third party company, as in it goes through that payment system before appearing in your bank account. It's just so good to be rewarded in that way, especially if you've done a lot of overtime, you can just see it turn up in your account next day. So this one's rather apt. So this is the Guild Hall or effectively Geld Hall, because it's based upon uh, when we're, you know, more Germanic speaking languages here in London. Uh, Geld meaning money. That's the German word for money, money hall. And that's rather apt when it comes to driving a taxi, because I found that since driving a taxi, I generally don't have to worry about money so much. Now, I don't mean that I'm absolutely minted. I've got more money than what I can care to, you know, worry about. It's more that I've kind of always got money. You know, if a bill comes up, um, or something, I can generally pay it, or if we have a, a budget to go on holiday, whatever. Now, I'm quite resourceful, and I live well within my means anyway, 
and it might also be because of the fact that I can go and work. So if I know that a bill's coming up, I can then work more towards it. Obviously, this is the COVID-19 pandemic aside. You know, let's not forget that during uh, 2020, I was actually on benefits because uh, the amount of money that I was going out earning the cab was less than what the cab was costing me, i.e. I was losing money. So I needed to supplement my income with the government benefits uh, to ensure I could pay my rent, um, cab finance payments, etc. But whether it's because I just look at my bank balance and see, maybe you could do a bit more money, I generally don't have to think about it. Or maybe, like the previous point, is because payday happens all the time. Therefore, I've got a lot better grip on what my finances look like because money's always coming in rather than just having one big payday at the end of the month, which I still can't get my head around. Some people believe that I either work for a firm or TfL takes a cut of my fares. Well, they don't. In fact, TfL, I just have to ensure I renew my badge every three years, about £300 or so, and I spend about £100 overhauling my taxi as well. But other than that, everything you see on the meter is mine. Now, of course, I need to pay my taxes. If I use a credit card, they take a percentage as well. But fundamentally, if someone hails me down on the street, they pay me there and then the transaction is directly through us. I keep my cab running, which you can find out in this video over here about some of the expenses I have to pay. But other than that, what you see on the meter goes straight into my back pocket. It's great, isn't it? Because it's your own money and there's no cuts at all, it feeds straight into you. It got me thinking, so long as I renew this badge every three years and I can you know, afford the hire of a cab, in theory, it's impossible for me to go broke. You could just hire a cab and just go and earn money. You know, even if it's really slow and there's not much work on the streets, you can just continually work and still take money. So it's really reassuring to know that if I fall on very hard times, if life circumstances change, as you know, we can't foresee the future, of course, that I can just jump in my cab and I can go out and earn money. I'm not gonna be homeless. It's, it's a really weird thing to say, but that is, you know, the, one of the great benefits of the job, that you have a guaranteed job for life. And a lot of you people will be saying like, oh, well, maybe the, you know, artificial intelligence and self-driving cars is gonna take over. I don't think so. And we've been taxi drivers in London since the 17th century. In fact, it was Oliver Cromwell who first granted us our license. So we've been around for nearly 400 years. I don't think we're going anywhere anytime soon. This is a job for life. So in a similar idea to having a job for life, is the fact that by driving a cab, you can have the best pension. What I mean by this, maybe not an actual sort of fully retired retirement, but if you get to the point later on in life where you don't have enough in like your government state pension because maybe for whatever reason you didn't top it up, or perhaps you don't have a very good private pension because maybe you didn't work for an employer that did that at the time, whatever the circumstances may be. Plus added to the fact you never know what state the country might be in at the time you go to draw your retirement. It's all well and good saving for a hypothetical future or retirement, but as we've just seen at the moment, you know, we're in the cost of living crisis, uh, inflation as well, and if the stock market tanks, your money's not gonna be worth as much as you would hope it to be. So the great thing with the cab is that even if you do have a pension, you can then top it up by going out a few days a week in the taxi. Uh, even if it's only a small pension, you can just have a modest sort of income of just working three days a week, something like that. I can tell you there's probably a lot worse options to be working at a later point in your life. You know, you can't really do labouring, you know, past a certain age. Um, even just sort of stuff like a binman or maybe even just being a postie. If you haven't got good mobility in your legs to be able to walk long, then you can't carry on with these careers or jobs until later on. Whereas driving a taxi, as long as you've got a valid driving licence and can pass a medical, well, you can do it till you drop, I guess. And another great benefit is non-uniform day. Obviously, I'm a bit casual, we could say, today. Um, I try and wear sort of quite plain clothes, no overly big brands, just because I suppose plain solid colours just looks a bit better. On one hand, I do think we should be, you know, professionally dressed, like, you know, all wearing a collar at a minimum, maybe a shirt or whatever. And some drivers only go out like that. Some drivers would never wear trainers. Um, I kind of just go with how I'm feeling from day to day. Sometimes it's nice to be able to wear just quite comfortable clothes. I like these, uh, these trousers, it's got good pockets and things on them to store keys, um, a wallet, things like that. Um, and they're just quite comfortable whilst driving. But other times, you know, I will wear a shirt. I feel like me, I can wear me. And that very neatly leads us onto our next point. I don't actually feel like a London taxi driver. In fact, I sort of wince when, you know, I'm at a party or if I meet someone new and I say, or they say, oh, what'd you do? And I'm like, I'm a London taxi driver because I don't really like, whether it's because I, you know, wear my own clothes, obviously, 
whether it's because you know I drive my own cab, it just doesn't sort of really occur to me. It's weird. When I come to work, I'm just driving my vehicle in London and people then hop in and out. I don't feel like I put on this persona that I then become someone else. Uh, when I used to work over in Fetelay many years ago, I would wear a suit, even though I was just a you know telesales coordinator, but your, your email um, footer would, would have like your job title in it and the company logo. And you feel like you had to you know, represent the company. And it was so, such a weird feeling. Like I, I didn't feel like me. But when I come out in the cab, I'm just, it, sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm at work. It's super strange because it's my sole livelihood. This is how I earn my money. This is where I come and work. I am a taxi driver. TfL govern the standard of all taxi drivers. And I suppose technically I'm employed by TfL, but I am not an employee of TfL because I'm self-employed. I do everything off my own back. I just pay my license then next year. So they're more kind of, a, well, they're a regulator effectively. They keep us all in check. I remember going to Leicester semi recently and there was taxi drivers there by the taxi rank. I looked at them, I'm like, well, they're taxi drivers. I'm like, that's the same job I do. But I had to think about it. Like, I didn't, I didn't really identify with it. And even when I come up here and I see these cabs driving around, I see like people I know and other friends that I don't really look at them as taxi drivers as well. I look at them as individuals. And that's the cool thing is that when I'm driving around, when I'm having conversations with people, I don't feel like I have to be behind this kind of facade. I don't have to be behind this theatre. I'm genuinely being me, the same way that I am with these YouTube videos. In fact, I feel like this is the only job I've ever had where I can actually sort of quite candidly and openly talk about it on YouTube in this kind of way. Being a cab driver has actually made me discover a lot about myself. When I worked in retail, I always thought I was extroverted. I even worked within telesales, right, sales. So I just assumed I was extroverted because I could talk, I could talk, you know, sell stuff. And you know, like every good salesperson, you think you're the absolute best, right? Since driving a taxi, I've actually realized I am introverted. It was only because I was talking about something that I was confident on, much like this YouTube as well, that I have that energy to talk about it. Actually, with other people, you know, when someone gets in the back of my cab, if they don't talk, my de facto is just to stay silent. I'm much more comfortable with the silence rather than trying to get a conversation out of someone. If a conversation happens, I go with it, but I actually find it kind of crippling sometimes to you know, try and open a conversation with someone. I know it's the most easiest thing to do. You talk about the weather, you talk about you know, how their day has been, whatever. But I always found it so, so difficult. And it's only since being in the environment of driving a taxi, you know, where I generally feel like myself, that I've actually realized that I am introverted. I don't think I would have ever discovered that had I sort of stayed within those kind of retail positions. And specifically being a London taxi driver, this is the most enviable office location in the world, right? So firstly, location wise, you can just stop anywhere in London and just look out upon the streets and there's just so much activity, people, energy, buildings. It's, you know, a real feast for the eyes. I find that when I come to London or like when I work in London, I can do a long shift, I feel fine. And then once I start to leave, I feel tired. It's because the actual place energizes me. And conversely, I've had it where I've turned up to work, where I feel, you know, uninspired, unenergized. Once you come into town, it just, it lifts you up. It's energizing, it's incredible. Certain days of the week do it as well. You know, Monday's a bit more of a calm, sort of chill day of the week. You come through to like Friday, Saturday as well, so many people on the street, you just feel, you get this buzz and it energizes you and it gets you through your day. And the other thing I like about it is that, obviously I'm in London, I'm driving all around London, I'm seeing all these different things, but I've got my internal environment here in the taxi. So I can have the windows up and this taxi is really well sound insulated. It's just a nice, calm, peaceful environment, especially when you're running on the electric, it's super smooth. It's just a real enjoyable experience. But then I can unwind the window. I can feel the sun on my skin. I can let the air in. I can hear conversations as I drive past. I can listen to a podcast or an audio book. If I'm feeling too hot, obviously pop the aircon on or if it's too cold. I've had arguments about that in the past when you've been in previous working environments where people say, oh, it's too cold. Oh, don't turn the heating on, I'm far too hot or whatever. Or arguments over the radio station. This is my space. I can customize it how I like. It's my mobile office. It's got everything in it I need to have a good day at work. And being in a vast capital like London, 
it generally always is a good day at work. The other great thing of this job is that everything is live and any bad situation will just go away in usually about 20 minutes. So you might get a, you know, maybe not as nice passenger. Most of the time, you know, 99% of passengers are absolutely fine. It might just be that 1%. And if you speak with them, you'll find out that 1% is largely that they might be running late, something like that. Just know that just, you know, be the best you can, be polite. They'll soon get out. They'll usually pay and away they go. You just carry on with your day and you just restart again. Uh, Golden Square's down that way, madam. Okay, yes, yeah. So come all the way through here and it just leads into it. Yeah, no worries. Or on the flip side is that you might get bad situations, but you can also get a lot of good opportunities from working the cab as well. You've got to remember the sort of people that you pick up are kind of, you know, could be high profile producers, things like that. One of the best stories, and it's to do with the building that we're outside of now, is actually a uh, cab driver by the name of Aidan Kent. Now he's actually known as the singing cabbie. So not only is he a fully qualified London taxi driver, he is also a professional singer. Well, he happens to have a chance encounter with Bradley Walsh. You might know him from the chase. Bradley Walsh in the back of his cab. He sees this lovely liveried cab that says Aidan Kent singing cabbie. What's this all about? They're getting a wonderful uh, discussion. And basically Bradley Walsh forwards his name to one of his producers and then that leads to Aidan Kent actually performing here at the London Palladium. Mm. This is Aidan Kent. He really is a cabbie. What a dream. Unbelievable. And I, and I it, should be talking to you like this, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah, that's... I mean, how incredible a connection is that? If you're a working cabbie from around the world, do pop uh, in the comments down below any chance encounters or connections you might have had as a result of driving the taxi. I've had days when I've turned up in a bit of a bad mood, not feeling great, and I've had passengers that then cheer me up. Like, they don't know that I'm necessarily in a bad mood, but just a bit of conversation soon helps you open up and realize that the world isn't that bad. And that leads us on to our next point, which we'll go check out now. You don't take your work home with you. When you drop someone off, they pay you, you are done. That's it, you're never gonna see that person again. Um, unless they leave a mobile phone in the back, in which case you have to reunite them with it. Um, but that's partly while I'm here in the West End because I love that when you pick up people who've had a really good evening, uh, maybe they've come out of a the theater, you drop them at their hotel, drop them at the train station, and you take that home as a good high. But you haven't got to worry about, oh, tomorrow morning, oh, I've got that massive task I've got to do at work, or, oh crap, I've got to deal with that person who was really late at getting back to me at completing that task. You don't have that in this job. You just turn up, you do each job, and then it's over, it's done. You just come back and it's a new day, it recycles itself. It's just so nice not having to worry about any sort of future problems or you know, if you've got a busy or hectic day coming up. When I worked within production, like TV production, you'd have to worry and stress about getting the production ready, hiring all the kit, loading the van, and then when you get there, you've got to set it all up and the client's got to be happy. And when you get back, you've got to worry about how it's going to be edited. And with this job, you just turn up, you drop them off, and you're done. It's like 20 minutes of not even stress because you know where you're going. You just have a nice chat with someone, drop them off, done. Super simple. So as a London cabbie, you can take as much holiday as you like. Uh, one of the things that really drew me to the job was that I hated it when I worked in retail, especially working in a very small team. It was kind of a cardinal sin to take Saturdays off. You weren't allowed to do it unless you took the whole week off preceding it. So, but lots of stuff in life happens on a Saturday. And of course, yeah, anything retail motivated, you generally always have to be there on a Saturday. But even if you work in the office, the bane of having to send an email to HR, waiting for it to get approved before you can then go ahead with your travel plans. With the taxi, you can just spin it like that. You can say, you know what, I'm not gonna come in tomorrow and I'm gonna go grab a flight tomorrow. When I first got my badge, I did that. I just went midweek to just a random European country pick the cheapest flights I could find because time didn't matter to me. I could just change my week based upon where I wanted to go and when I wanted to go. You know, I don't even need to book a return flight. I could be like, you know what? I'm enjoying this holiday. Let's just come back when I feel like it. It's also the idea you could do extended long-term travel. You know, you could hire a cab, work six months, hand the cab back, go traveling for however long you wish. So long as you keep your badge renewed, you're just straight back into the job, it's amazing. So this has been an overview as to why I believe being a London taxi driver is probably the best job in the world. If you actually wanna see me conducting the job of being a taxi driver, then do check out one of my shift videos down here. Or subscribe to my Sunday summary email. That's a free weekly email where I share what I've been up to in the cab and also lots of stuff behind the scenes on this channel. See you all again soon, bye-bye.